Hi guys, welcome back. Well, today is class one. We're going to be actually getting pencil on the paper. Now, for those of you who are new, we are starting the Comprehensive Color Blending 2 class. This is the first work class. I've done three or four or six <laughs> by now pre-videos. They're all in, if you go to my page, my channel page, and you look at the buttons that say playlists, it should be right at the top. Push the playlist, and you will find in order all the pre-classes that we have done to get to this point. So I'm really happy that you guys are here, and we're ready to start. For the new people, the paperwork for this course is in the link in my description. I made this class extremely inexpensive. It's a cheap coloring book, basically, for everything. <laughs> Priced that way. It is on sale now. That sale is going to be ended. I left it up for over a month. I was only going to leave it up for a couple of weeks, and I left it up for you guys for a month. Somewhere in the, in the course of the beginning classes, the price of the course is going to go to where my other courses are usually at. By now, you've gotten your color wheel. And this is the specific color wheel we need for this class. You can use other color wheels, but it's not as good as this one. I left a link to it in the description. It's, I've been changing it as the vendors have been running out of it. The link should go to at least one of these if you find it less expensive. When you do a related search in Amazon, as long as it's this one, it doesn't matter. Why do I have this one? Because this has all the primary colors, all the shades, shadows, and on the other side, it has the muted colors. Sorry, this one is a little damaged. I can't seem to find my new one. It's under my paperwork here. So I had to break out my little damaged one. I do recommend if you can get it laminated to laminate it. It comes with the turning thing on the top, rip it off, you don't need it. The turning thing is for paints. It's not really for colored pencils. This is good for colored pencils. So we're going to get out the first flower, and it's this one. Well, the reference pictures are in a private video that comes with the course. Like, everybody was looking for the sound. There's no sound in the reference photo video because you're going to stop it at the flower that we're working on. You're not going to leave it running. I left it so that you can zoom in on just about anything on that reference picture. Just move your little cursor over to wherever you're working on and you can blow it up as big as you want. And as I said, there is no sound to it so that you could put your own music on. We're going to be living with this reference photo video for many, many weeks. Another thing about this course, this is class one. Class one may involve four videos. I don't know. We're going to work on it until the flower is finished. And I'm going to teach you until the flower is finished. Then we're going to move on. We have 20 minutes in a video. If we get to one part of the flower and I have to do another video and another video, that's why I'm not putting a time stamp on this class. I'm giving you a till we learn the, the material. There's a lot of material. Now, if you're taking a college art class, those classes are four hours, which are probably about four hours of instruction is, is a normal amount. And that includes like work time. So I also gave you in the paperwork, this flower, every flower, a bigger flower. Work on the smaller one or work on the bigger one, whichever one you're comfortable with. I'm going to teach it to you so that you could do it both ways. Your pencils. Your pen, as I said, I taught you in the pre-classes how to find your undertones. What you're going to need in this class is to be able to find those undertones. Are you going to be able to find every color? No. So color is not the most important thing. It's knowing how to read the undertone so that if you are doing, if you say you're doing a portrait, you can't change something. With flowers, it's very easy to change things and you don't have to be perfect because no flower out there is the same. So that's why I chose flowers to teach this course because everybody will walk away with a pretty flower. 
that is where we're at now. I'm going to start giving you the information that you're going to need for this class. Now, if you noticed on the page, you're going to print it out. You notice at the top, I have the reference photo in black and white. On the side over here, I have the Prismacolor pencils that I would use with this flower. It doesn't mean you have to use those colors. And we're going to get into how to choose the colors in just a minute. Those are just references that suggestions, a direction that you can go. Now, why are we doing this in oil and I gave you Prismacolor? Because this course was designed pre-COVID and pre-changes when I was just teaching in Prismacolor. And that's when we did, uh, Abby and I did the paperwork for this. Now, a little bit about the flowers. They were hand drawn by me. And then Abby took that my hand drawing and made it like computer, like printable. There is a line that does not completely match up with the reference photo. It's not a big deal. It's a flower. You deal with what you have. I haven't even colored these flowers yet, so I don't even know how close I got. I think I got pretty close, but it's, there's, every, there's workarounds for everything. So we're going to start now with today's lesson. Today's objective is we're going to pick our first pencils and we're going to find anchoring points. There's a lot of different names for anchoring points. Some teachers call it landmarks. We're going to do our landmarks in this picture. When you guys were coloring in books, and that's where most of my subscribers are coming over from the coloring book groups, and people who picked up pencils and didn't even think of doing their own art, they were just coloring in coloring books. I'm going to change the way you color. If you have been learning art through the coloring community, a lot of people just do a fade. We're not doing a fade in this class. There will be fades done, Gradu you know, um, a gradient or a fade. That will be part of it because it's part of the picture. But I'm not going to specifically teach you to do it that way. I want you to take it out of your mind that there is just one way of doing it because it's not the way it is. I had a couple of people hand in pre-pictures to me. They just jumped the gun and started and I saw the same mistakes as everybody make. Well, they're not really mistakes. I saw the same habits that everybody does when they're coloring and coloring books. We're going to change it more over to a professional way of coloring. And every teacher that teaches art teaches it in a different way. So just because I'm telling you one thing doesn't mean that's the only way of doing it. This is my way of teaching. So let's get on to today's topic, and it's going to be picking your first pencils and anchoring. Now, I want you to turn on, if you can possibly put on my video and the reference video, so you're listening and looking at the reference photos at the same time. Um, later on, you can put on anything you want. What I want you to look at is the reference photo for this picture. It's obviously a very large pink flower. I want you to look over to this area, this one tiny little area over here, okay? This bottom leaf. If you notice in there, there's actually three colors. There's a darker, a medium, and a light. And that's why I've been pushing you with the analogous trios. You're always going to get out those analogous trios. I don't care if you color this picture blue, purple, orange, red. It doesn't make a difference. What we're looking at is your tonal value. How bright a color is versus how dark a color is. And that's where your analogous trio is going to come in and is always going to come in. Now, I've picked three colors. Now, they're not the same brand of pencils. This is why I get extremely angry at companies that copy each other. If one company puts out the same, and we've been discussing this a lot, um, one company puts out the exact same pencils, why buy two boxes of them? You want new colors. Well, that's because you want as many analogous trios as you can find. So out of my deli set, I got out 
well, they don't have colors on them. I got out 124 and 122. Okay? You could see when you're coloring it. Now, you should have been practicing this with your sets. Here is the 122. And here is the 124. Now, on your color wheel, you're going to notice that we're dealing with the violet reds and the red violets, okay? It sort of matches up with the, with the reference photo. These are just slightly different to, from each other. And they're analogous because violet, red, and violet, red. There may not be a time where you have three violet reds. You may have to go over to the red violets. But that because these are next to each other on the color wheel, they're also analogous. So in these colors that I just chose, I've got the pencils that match up to the, the picture. And this happens to be a red violet and a violet red. And that's perfectly fine. And when you go through doing a gradient, like a practice gradient, you're going to see that these colors blend straight into each other because they have that violet color in common. And you can create a blend that's seamless. Now, these are oil pencils. Remember, we talked about oil pencils. They don't blend with each other like cake batter. They blend with each other by going over like the cellophane. But when you have that analogous trio, you're not fighting that blend. If I was mixing a yellow and a green, I mean a yellow and a blue because I wanted to make green, I would have a very hard time measuring it. If I was using a wax pencil like a Prismacolor, I'd have a much easier time getting those colors to turn green. So with the oil pencil, now this could be any set of oil pencils, and I'm sorry if my finger is blue. I am not hurt. I'm not, I was playing with resin, and I was using alcohol inks and it exploded on my hand after like I was cleaning it up and I picked up the bottle of blue alcohol ink and it splashed right on my hand and by the time I completely cleaned up I had alcohol ink all over my hand and I can't get this off no matter what I, I tried nail polish remove the acetone it, it's just gonna just have to wear off of me so I'm not damaged I'm just, and it's in my my nail beds too so I'm not turning blue, I'm just stained. Getting back to this, here we have our two colors. And they're pretty much matching up to the reference photo. Is it perfect? No, because maybe I don't have the reference photo picture. Now, if I was getting paid and I needed to make that picture the identical, perfect one, I would take this over to Blix. I would go play in their pencils and I'd be buying the colors in the different sets from Singleton's because I have to match up that specific color and make it perfect. We don't have to make it perfect because it's a flower. It could be any color. You could be doing, if you want to do blues, you could just assign dark, medium, and a light. So here we have our first two. Now we're going to get our third one out. Now. I could have gone through, I have over a thousand pencil seals. I do have the light color version of it. And in fact, this one, which doesn't have a name too, which came from the indie set. Did you know that that's what pastels do? When you buy a pastel set, you're actually buying the lightest version, the tinted version of all the pencils. That's why I like to have lots of, um, pastel sets because there we go with number three it is the undertone with the pink and this is going to be my trio now these happen to be wax and they 
blend into there really nicely. Now you notice the tone on this. I have a very distinct dark, I have a very distinct middle, and I have a very distinct light. If I want to get this pencil lighter and it didn't match up perfectly, and I want it to really be a perfect match, I happen to like this trio. So when my picture is finished, I'm going to be very happy with this color trio. But say you want it to be identical to the way the reference photo is. You could take that middle color and lay it out, take a good white. Now, a good white, when I say a good white, I meant a Holbein, a um, Prismacolor, something that's creamy and white. I do not recommend the cheap Chinese whites um, that come in all the sets. They don't do anything. They don't lighten your picture. They just scratch your paper. They just haven't perfected the white. I have a Holbein here. That's a really good one. You could be using a Prismacolor white, but it consider it a separate tool. I could take my white and just make a blend. So right here, it's actually a closer match than this color. I like this color, but I might go with this. So here you have medium, light. It's the same pencil, so you know that they're analogous of each other. And I just add in my darker for my shaded areas. And what do we have here? We have the reference photo pictures. To pick your three colors that you're going to be using. Now there's more pic there's more colors on that, but I'm talking about the main petal um, colors here. We're going to be picking the stem colors, and there's some really good. I don't even know what they're called, those pre-color, like those pre-leaves that are underneath. They're not, I'm not up with my plant anatomy. But if you look on the reference photos, those come out beige. They're actually closer to this color. This color has a little bit of the beige in it. It's more of an orangey color, but the base of it is that color. And if you look on the reference photo, you're going to find this color in there. So right now we're just working on the petals and we're going to do the rest of the flower as the weeks go on. And that is this part. Now we're going to take our pencils to the picture. As we get further along into the course, this is going to become easier. I'm going to go really slow with this picture and I purposefully picked this picture because the colors were so easy to identify. On this picture, we're going to look and we're going to use our mid-tone color for anchoring points. Now, what are the anchoring points? Now, let's take a look at these boxes. Now, there are two, two ways of using a grid system. For those who can color in the grid, you match this grid up to the grid on the reference photo. And that's one way of doing it. My brain doesn't function that way. I can't do a picture like that. Um, I've, everybody does art differently. I like to do art from the bottom up. I like to build my colors. So what I'm using these lines for is to identify my anchors. Now, we're going to just take a look at this right here versus the one that comes with the with the course. Just this box right here. Okay? That's all I'm worried about. Which means I only have this amount that I'm concentrating on. And what I recommend doing is taking a piece of paper and just blocking out on here and on the reference picture so that you can concentrate just on this little part. We're going to be looking for anchoring. Get your pencil nice and sharp. You're going to look on your reference photo. And if you look in here, you're going to see some darker lines. Now I'm working with the toned picture, which is up here you are going to work from 
this and from the colored version. Now, in the colored version, this little tip is mostly darker pink, but it has some darker lines. Now, if this was colored, like if I had drawn this out to do a picture of my own, I would have had these lines so light that you could barely see them, but we're dealing with ink, so I couldn't do that. I have looked at this midpoint and noticed there's a mid-tone going, line going straight down. And that's why you're using oil pencil, because I can put this anchor here. It's not going anywhere. If this was Prismacolor, I would have, it would, by the time I was done, it would be all over the place. This anchor is now perfect. By the way, do not draw this box. I only pointed it out. I'm sure you got that and understood that. So I've got a main anchoring there. Then if I count going down, I have a lighter area, which is right there. And then it sort of gets darker. And then right in there is a darker line. I'm going to put that in. That's my anchor. Now this side going down, crossing areas right in this area is another line. And if I go right to this point, I have another line going down. And this is a little bit darker. So it's not right now where most of you would be coloring and just going like this to color everything in. We're not going to do that. We're going to work anchor point to anchor point. I'm only using my mid-tone pencil to represent the darkest lines. As we get more into this picture, I only want you to be working with your mid-tone pencil this week. I want you to put in all the anchor lines. Now, if you don't do it perfect, don't stress over it. It's a flower. Your pictures will come out gorgeous, I promise. It takes practice. Does it always have to have these lines in it? What, every single line that's in a photograph? No. You're going to get your main points. Like, if you look right here, that's a pretty dark area. I'm going to put that in right about here. And then it goes to like sort of a point and it cuts off a little bit beforehand. Okay. And I can lightly shade that in, even though it's going to be my dark pencil. Eventually, eventually it's going to look a lot like this. For now, my tone, I'm only using my mid tone. Why your mid tone? because your lights will be in the white area, your darks will be in your mid-tone area. And after we get all the picture, all your uh, anchors in, and you have everything where it is, we're gonna adjust the tone in another class. It's too much in one class. So this week, what I want you to do is practice finding your anchor points don't get frustrated. It takes practice. You may want to do it two or three times. You may want to work on it like 15 minutes a day until the next class. You're not going to be coloring in the stem or any of these. That's going to be a different class because we're going to be doing something different with this. Okay? We're only working with this. It's not that much, but it should take you a long time. That's why I'm always telling you guys, slow down. If you finish... From start to finish, this picture in one day, you are going way too fast. Slow it down. Concentrate. There's a lot going on in just this one square. You might want to work on a square a day. There is plenty going on in just this tiny little bit of an area that you can be concentrating on this. What also might happen is your lines... And this is where I had you guys practicing starting and stopping, okay? 
because not everything is done on a grid. Sometimes it goes like that. Sometimes it'll start, abruptly stop, and then go on. Okay? You're turning. This is why I had you guys practicing on the graph paper. So in between this, continue to do those little start and stops on the graph paper to get your hand and your muscle memory ready to be doing very specific lines. Okay? They should be, your hand should be going in all sorts of directions just to practice. Okay? If you have any questions at all, you want to show me your work, you want me to critique you in private, I am available to every single person. It may take me a day to get back to you because there's a lot of people taking the class, but I will get back to everybody. Don't push ahead with your pictures and say, oh, this was so easy, and then start going into this because we're going to do some different things. Keep up with what I'm doing. And the most important thing is just trust the process. We will take you through this. And then we will move on and we will take you through the next and the next. And wait until you find out about leaves and a rose. It took me 10 times of doing roses before I nailed one. You guys are going to nail that rose. I will see you in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.